السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مینی آر ان اویئر بٹ اے ریولیوشن از سلولی ٹیکنگ پلیس تھاؤزنڈ آف مسلم اسکالرز اینڈ دا یوتھ آر ٹرننگ ٹوڈز دا ویو پوائنٹ آف دا احمدیا مسلم کمیونٹی آن مینی کانسیپٹس ون ایگزامپل از دا مینی اسکالرز ہیو ناؤ ریجیکٹڈ دا کانسیپٹ آف دا سبسٹیٹیوشن تھیوری We also see that many scholars, including the Arabs, have rejected the concept of Hazrat Isa salam, being alive physically in the heavens and have accepted that he will never return. This video will focus on Gog and Magog, also known as Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Recently, a famous scholar named Yasser Qadi has rejected the mainstream view of Gog and Magog. Let us hear him explain the false view still held by many Muslims. Anybody who knows science and geography and modern civilization, you cannot believe that there is a tribe for 4,000 years trapped behind a wall. I mean, if you believe this, any, that's your position. I, I cannot believe it. I'm just being, I cannot, I, I find this very difficult to believe. Yasir Qadi also accepts that many of the Muslim youth are leaving Islam because of these false interpretations which do not make any sense. Now, if you want to stop at this and say, I don't want to go beyond this, that's good for you. But what do you do to our 25-year-old college kid who comes and he keeps on saying, what do we do about this? Do we believe in these fairy tales? This is mythology. Would you believe this? What do we do to that young mind? If we tell him, you shut up and don't ask questions, we turn him away. What I'm trying to do is to save the Iman of that generation. Alhamdulillah, most of us elders, we have no worries. Alhamdulillah, we're not worried about these things. Whether we understand or don't understand, we know Islam is true. We know Islam to be true. Our younger generation doesn't have that level of Iman in the first place. So when these issues come, their Iman is not strong enough to overcome. So they say, we're going to reject Islam. So I would rather present an alternative that is somewhat palatable, and they can then accept it rather than they reject Islam. Is that clear? So who are the Gog and Magog? In short, one of the signs of the Latter-day Messiah was the coming of Gog and Magog and the Jal. In reality, both of these terms are used for the same people and this is proven from the Quran and the Ahadith. The term Dajjal relates to their religious term and the term Gog and Magog refers to their political term. They are two powerful people who are to appear in the end times, namely the Christian nations of the West and Russia. The words Gog and Magog itself prove this as these words are derived in Arabic from the word fire, meaning those who will work with fire and through fire they would make many inventions and weapons. They would also be of fiery nature. When Allah the Almighty sent Hazrat Ahmad they had rule over the entire world and were succeeding in every way possible. They took over many countries physically and controlled others with their mind. In their shadow, the Christian faith was spreading rapidly and attacking Islam. Hazrat Ahmad came and destroyed these false beliefs and the Christians had to run from India. The scholars were left speechless. All the Muslims were turning to Hazrat Ahmad to defend Islam. He defeated all Christians and people of other faiths through his arguments and the cross had been shattered. جو ہے مولانا ابو الکلام آزاد مولانا صلاۃ اللہ امرسری اصل میں یہ ایک خاص دور تھا جب کہ اسلام کے خلاف ایک تو عیسائی عیسائی خود خود تھے میری اتنا نہیں ہے یہ بھارت میں جو ارسل رہا ہوں وہ یہ کہ جو کام وہ کر رہا تھا اس نے تو عیسائی مشنریز کے ساتھ سلاجرے کی اور انہیں شکست دی عیسائی مشنریز کو ساتھ مناظرے کر کے غلام احمد نے انہیں شکستیں دی اور ایک زبردست جو ایک وائلنٹ تحریک اٹھ گئی تھی یہ ستیارت پرکاش کا جو مصنف تھا آریہ سماج تو آریہ سماج کے لوگوں سے بھی اس نے مناظرے کیے اور انہیں شکستیں دی اچھا ان دو چیزوں کی وجہ سے علماء کی آنکھوں کا تارہ بن گیا 
In the preface to the Urdu translation of the Holy Quran by Mulana Ashraf Ali Tanvi and Shah Rafiuddin, published in 1934 in Delhi by Noor Muhammad, it stated, In that period, Bishop Lefroy gathered an army of missionaries and left England, promising that he would soon convert the whole of India to Christianity. Having collected a great amount of money from the people of England and assurances from them of continuing assistance in the future, he entered India and raised a big storm. His attack on the teachings of Islam was a failure, but the attack based on the argument that Jesus was alive in heaven in his physical body while all other prophets were buried in the earth was in his view proving to be effective upon the general public. At that juncture, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed stood up and addressed Lefroy and his group saying, The Jesus you talk about is dead and buried like all other mortals, and the Jesus whose coming is prophesied is myself, so you must accept me. By this means, he made things so difficult for Lefroy that he could not shake him off. In this way, he defeated all the Christian missionaries from India to England. The viewpoint of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community is exactly what the Prophet Muhammad taught us. The Prophet said, if you want to protect yourself, from the Dajjal, read the first and last ten verses of Surat Al-Kahf. They speak about Christianity. The first ten verses are about Christianity and focus on their religious mission, while the last ten verses focus more on their materialistic mission. For example, in industry, they excel the entire world. The verses of chapter 18, Surat Al-Kahf, speak on Gog and Magog, and this is the term given to the Jal by the Holy Quran. The Ahadith mentions that the greatest fitna is the Jal, and the Quran mentions that the greatest fitna is saying that Allah has a son, two figures of the same entity. That is the Antichrist. They will be the Christians, yet be the Antichrist, as they will not believe in the true Hazrat Isa Christianity is spoken through two personalities. One is through their preachers, and the second is their political, materialistic, and industrial image. They would cover the entire world and conquer it, and bring it under their control. They have a specific relationship with the sea and fire. Hazrat Ahmad stated, I have also proved that it is essential for the promised Messiah to appear at the time of Gog and Magog, since Ajij, from which the words Gog and Magog are derived, means fire, God Almighty has disclosed to me that Gog and Magog are a people who are greater experts in the use of fire than any other people. Their very names indicate that their ships, trains, and machines will be run by fire. They will fight their battles with fire. They will excel all other people in harnessing fire to their service. This is why they will be called Gog and Magog. These are the people of the West as they are unique in their expertise in the use of fire. In Jewish scriptures too, it was the people of Europe who were described as Gog and Magog. Even the name of Moscow, which is the ancient capital of Russia, is mentioned. Thus, it was preordained that the promised Messiah would appear in the time of Gog and Magog. We learn from the authentic ahadith of the Prophet Muhammad that no man would be able to fight these powers in the literal sense. On this, Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmed, may Allah be pleased with him, stated, The Holy Prophet referring to the latter days, prophesied, Gog and Magog will rule the world and they will rise wave after wave, and the whole world will be overwhelmed by the waves of their power. 
At that time, the Messiah will be raised in the world, and the Messiah with his followers will try to fight them and will attempt to counter them. Allah will then speak to the Messiah saying that no man in the world has been granted the power to fight these two nations which we have created, not even you. There is only one way that you seek shelter on a mountain and pray to God. It is only the weapon of prayer that can subjugate these nations. Now this is the truth about Gog and Magog and many Muslim scholars and preachers are turning to this view. Let us first hear an interview of Yasir Qadi with Muhammad Hijab. Are we required to believe in the existence of tens of millions of people currently alive? I said if you look at the Quran, Ya'juj and Ma'juj is something in the past and the future, not current, right? The Qarnayn in the past. And then in the future, they're also called Ya'juj and Ma'juj. It doesn't necessarily say that they are currently alive right now. There is a group in the past, and it, it is possible that a similar group in the future is called Ya'juj and Ma'juj as well. Like we call a room, and we all believe that a room of the past is current Western civilization. Even though there's not an actual biological line, it's just the same fikra, the same thought. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Alhamdulillah, Yasir Qadi accepts that the verses of the Quran do not mean that the Gog and Magog of the past are the same Gog and Magog of the future. They are both given the same titles because of their similarity. This is exactly what the Muslim scholars need to accept with the coming of the Latter-day Messiah as well. The Quran makes it clear that Hazrat Isa salam, has died and will never return. The Prophet wasallam, himself said that the Latter-day Messiah would not be the Prophet of Bani Israel, rather an Imam from among the Muslims. He is even described differently. Why accept that Gog and Magog of the past are different than the ones of the future, yet deny that the Latter-day Messiah would be someone other than the previous Messiah? So which interpretation does Yasir Qadi give the public for Gog and Magog? Well, he tells Muhammad Hijab the interpretation of the Sheikh of his own Sheikh named Sheikh Asadi, and it is exactly what Hazrat Ahmed al explained. Sheikh Asadi was born in 1889 and he gave the very same view that the promised Messiah al explained throughout his books. But now that we have come to a conclusion, a possible conclusion that mm. we are not required to believe in them, what then do we make of these narrations. So I said there's a number of things that can be said. Of them I quoted the Shaykh of my Shaykh, Shaykh, Shaykh Sa'di, right? And again, my, uh, I have to gently say the critics, may Allah guide them in us, in their overzealousness, refuse to do their own research to even know that Did what I said... Did you say that as well, Shaykh Sa'di? I didn't quote him because oh. it is, I don't, Shaykh Sa'di said that they are, they are uh, the Roman, the, the Americans and, and, and he said the Americans and the uh, Russians are Yajuj and Majuj. He said the Americans and the uh, Russians are Yajuj and Majuj. He said the Americans and the uh, Russians are Yajuj and Majuj. He said the Americans and the uh, Russians are Yajuj and Majuj. Now Yasir Qadi does not stop there. He also admits that the arguments of the Shaykh were so strong that the other scholars were unable to answer. That's what Sheikh Sa'ad said, right? And his, the ulama of his time... Is that his or... Yeah, it's in, it's yeah. Had a treatise on this. The yeah. ulama of his time complained to the king. He was called to a court trial. I mean, not a court trial, but a king trial. Yeah. He was called to Riyadh, yeah. King Abdul Aziz. Mm -hmm. And the ulama and him on one side. And he defended himself from an usuri perspective. Like, I'm not denying the Quran and Sunnah. Yeah. I don't believe that Ajuj and are, are currently behind a wall. Mm. And my tafsir is da da da. You can disagree with it, but you can't kick me out of Sunni Islam. Right? Yeah, okay. And he defended himself yeah. in a manner that none of his critics could then respond to. That's exactly what I'm humbly saying as well. In a manner that none of his critics could then respond to. Although the famous scholar Imran Hussein mocks Hazrat Ahmed -Salam, he was forced to admit that Hazrat Ahmed -Salam was correct about Gog and Magog. In his book An Islamic View of Gog and Magog in the Modern World, he states, 
A remarkable feature of this manifestly and dangerously misguided sect is that its founder, a man named Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, correctly located Gog and Magog in the nations of modern Western civilization. He mocks the promised Messiah salam, and then says he was amazingly correct on several other very important issues. The Muslim youth are going astray and leaving Islam because of such false interpretations. Yasir Qadi has even called them fairy tales and has now rejected them in public. We see that many of the youth are confused about what these verses mean, and the only true cure is accepting the promised Messiah and Imam Mahdi, who gave us the true view of the Quran and the Ahadith. Let us now hear a beautiful answer by the Khalifa of Islam, Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmed. May Allah strengthen his hands. <laughs> چیزیں اس لیے آنسل نے فرمایا تھا کہ جو سورہ کاف کی پہلی دس آیتیں اور آخری دس آیتیں اس زمانے میں یہ تو پڑھنی چاہیے تھیں اور اس زمانے کے لیے خاص طور پر جو مسلمات کو زمانہ آئے گا کیونکہ اس میں سارا تم دیکھ لو ان دس آیتوں میں اللہ تعالیٰ کی بادانیت اور شرک سے نفی کا ذکر ہوتا ہے اور یہ سائنسدان یا ایسی حکومتیں ہیں یا وہ لوگ جو اسلام کو ختم کرنے کے لیے ہیں وہ سب وہ لوگ ہیں جو شرک پرستی کر رہے ہیں بت پرستی اگر نہیں کر رہے تو حضیثہ کو شرک کو خدا کے مقابلے پر کھڑا کر کے شرک کرتے ہیں تو یہ لوگ یہی ہیں جو دجال ہے حدیثوں میں دجال کا ذکر آتا ہے دجل سے فریب سے اسلام کو خدا تعالیٰ کی ذات پر کے مقام کو گرانا یا اسلام کے خلاف حرکتیں کرنا تو یہی چیزیں ہیں اس لیے ہے کہ تم لوگ اس زمانے میں یہ دجل اور فریب اور سائنس اور ترقی یہ سب کچھ زیادہ ہو جائے گا اس میں رہتے ہوئے تم لوگوں نے زیادہ زیادہ خدا تعالیٰ کے قریب جانا ہے اللہ تعالیٰ کے قرب حاصل کرنا ہے دین کا علم حاصل کرنا ہے اور پھر اسلام کی I pray that Allah enables these scholars and the Muslim youth to accept the Imam Mahdi and pledge allegiance to the Khalifa of Islam. Ameen.